everyone to uh, the first of our Ninja Knowledge webinars. And I just want to run through the uh, agenda very, very quickly so we don't take up uh, too much of our special guest's time. I'm going to let him introduce himself momentarily. Uh, so first of all, just a quick introductions. Uh, myself, uh, my name is Steve Lotz, and I am one of the uh, co-owners of AIS Solutions, uh, a bookkeeping and accounting firm located in Burlington, Ontario. And I'm here with my partner, Juliet, are you going to say a word or two? Sure. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, we are so excited to be launching our Ninja Knowledge webinar series and so excited with our first guest as well, So, which Steve will introduce momentarily. Absolutely. And um, so we anticipate our webinar is going to go about 45 to 50 minutes, and then we're hoping to have 10 to 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. Uh, we uh, are on a reasonably tight schedule, so we're not going to be able to go too far over. But uh, the webinar is also going to be recorded, so everyone will receive a recording of the webinar afterwards. Um, the uh, other thing, too, is, and I'm pretty sure that our guest will not have to make this disclaimer, but uh, I'm going to make it for ourselves and the disclaimer is that uh, we are huge fans of QuickBooks. We are a 100% QuickBooks firm in Burlington. Over 90% of our clients use QuickBooks online, and that will be 100% by the end of this year. And yes, we are extremely biased when it comes to QuickBooks. <laughs> uh, so now we have that disclaimer out of the way. Um, the, uh, if we could also make sure perhaps the chat is working for everyone, if you can just type in the chat box on the right hand side there and um, just type in perhaps your uh, first name and uh, where you are in the country so we just know that it's all working and that uh, uh, <laughs> Sandra, okay, Kimmy, Tobacco, <laughs> Jackie, BC, Anna, Toronto, John, Mississauga, John, okay, I can't keep up with that. Okay, the chat box is working awesome. And uh, if you have a question, like I say, we will try our best to answer all of them. But if you do have a question, please enter it into the uh, Q&A box there. That, that way it'll be recorded and we can take them in order as they have uh, come in to us. And now all of that being said, like uh, Juliet mentioned, we are very honored that uh, our special guest for our first webinar of Ninja Knowledge is uh, Jeff Cates, the president and CEO of Intuit Canada. I'm not going to go into a whole uh, preamble on Jeff because I'm going to ask Jeff to please introduce himself. And perhaps you could also, uh, Jeff, share with us a little bit about your journey. How did you arrive to where you are today? Jeff. Sure. Um, Jeff Gates, president of Intuit Canada. Um, journey line, I guess. I, I was born in Sarnia, so down southern Ontario, close to the U.S. border. Um, my dad was in engineering. My mom was in nursing, so a little bit of care and logic there. Uh, played their typical roles. Um, we moved to a small town outside of a small town, so Midhurst, which is just outside of Barrie, uh, an hour or so north of Toronto. It gets a lot more snow. Uh, and so I grew up. Uh, saying hi to everybody on the street and keeping the doors unlocked, uh, which I learned the hard way is not such a good thing to do in Toronto when I got older. Uh, very entrepreneurial as a kid. I think my first business was around 12. Um, did a variety of things. My favorite one, I think, back then was uh, two guys in the truck. We were trying to do assisted do-it-yourself moving. Uh, didn't, didn't last for very long, but nonetheless, uh, we were energized by it. Uh, I went to McMaster for commerce and and I almost did a minor in psychology, really fascinated with that, and started up another small business with two of my buddies in uh, university and thought I was going to head down that path. And then an internship started up at Mac, and one of the first companies in was Hewlett Packard, and it was in their medical division, and I was really torn. I'm just fascinated about, uh, with medical and then you know technology and then the godfathers of, of uh, the Silicon Valley, and I thought, wow, I just I can't pass this up. So I joined HP on the internship and tried to be a starving student while running this uh, small business on the side. 
and uh, something had to give. And so I ended up uh, exiting out of the small business, which um, closed shortly after I left. Uh, and then uh, at HP, I spent 15 years there and I did a variety of different roles. But uh, in the end, I ran the uh, consumer business and HP shopping on the side. And so much of whom I am as a leader is really from the HP days and the way that Bill and Dave had set up the organization, the culture, and uh, the importance of, of uh, humans first, not, not paychecks first, uh, which uh, Intuit also subscribes to. My boss went over to Apple and said, uh, hey, come on over. You might have heard of them. Uh, come, run, come run consumer, come run commercial, just come on over. And so I thought it was the right time to kind of push myself out of what I, what I knew and what I didn't know. And so I went over and ran the commercial business, which is basically small business through to enterprise and a few other things like training and, and um, engineering. Uh, and that was a really cool experience. I learned a lot uh, from Apple. I learned a lot in particular around brand and the importance of like really caring for the brand all the way through to that tiniest detail. Like, for example, how long it takes for the, the, the cover to come off the box um, down to the you know, really caring about what that ultimate experience will be like. One of my uh, one of my most fascinating moments was when I was told I needed to have every table measure three inches from the left and four inches from the front for uh, the release of the iPad. And if a reseller didn't have those meet those requirements, then they couldn't get the iPad. So really, like intense, like <laughs> crazy um, passion around brand experience. Um, but I also learned a lot about myself from the HP days and things I didn't even recognize. And again, a lot of that was the importance of team, around innovation, uh, around how to connect with employees. And so Intuit came a calling and said, hey, come make products for Canadians, buy Canadians in Canada, uh, help take us global. Uh, we, you know, we're a very value-centric company and uh, we want you to innovate and we want you to create new things. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, a technology company, um, making products for Canadians, employing Canadians, uh, that sounds super exciting. And so that was about six years ago. On the side, I've got uh, three kids, so a 17-year-old, a 15-year-old, and 11-year-old, boy, girl, boy. And so they're all kind of at that, that fun stage now where we're like half friend, half parent, and I can do stuff with them. In most cases, they're pretty much better at everything than I am. <laughs> I've been married for 20 years, uh, happily married, and live in Oakville. Big Manchester United fan, and I, um, I'm really big into adrenaline-type sports. So uh, I'm trying to get my kids into that, whitewater canoeing, uh, parachuting, bungee jumping, I've done all, all those things. And I love it just because it's you know, so focused and really gets you in the moment. But I'm having trouble getting my kids really excited about it, but um, there's still time. And my, uh, my kids uh, cried when I left HP because it was such a family-centric culture. Uh, they got over it when I brought the iPods home. <laughs> <laughs> You're not quite excited about TurboTax yet, but you know, I'm hoping one of them will enjoy QuickBooks Self-Employed or, or QuickBooks Online in the future. And that's me. Very exciting. Thank you so much. Have you been able to convince your um, kids to do the zip lining in Niagara Falls yet, across Niagara Falls? Mm, no, we haven't done that, but we did do a trip in, uh, to Costa Rica in January, and we did uh, zip lining there, and we also did whitewater rafting. And my, my favorite moment was seeing all three kids up on a wave learning how to surf. It was just so incredible. But no Niagara Falls yet. Not yet. So it's on your it's on your bucket list. So yeah, you told us a little yes. bit about your journey. Tell us what it is that you love about what you do with Intuit. Well, um, there's a couple of things. One, you know, we have close to 400 employees in Canada, and, and so creating an awesome environment for them to show up to work every day and, and making a meaningful impact in our customers' lives is 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 really big for me. Uh, that's really important. Um, we've been named. Uh, best place to work in Canada, so that's that tells us we're on a good path on that. We can always do more, but um, that that gives me a ton of energy. And then the second thing is, you know, as a failed small business owner, um, many times throughout my career, I thought, oh, I'm going to go back and and do that. And uh, although I kind of scratched the itch by mentoring small businesses and getting involved in various boards, um, really, I feel like now I'm in this like, wonderful spot where I work for an organization that can have an impact on tens of thousands of lives, um, not only in Canada, but even by the innovations we do here around the world. And that's super exciting. So I just love that, 
the, the fact that I can, I have this opportunity to make a, such a big impact in the world. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Um, I'd like to uh, change the topic a little bit now, if I might. But before I get to that, I do just want to address this Manchester United thing, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, I happen to be a supporter of the uh, blue team in Manchester. Oh, so, uh, my son would be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was many, many years when uh, we were in denial and we never admitted we were uh, supporting the blue team. You just said you were from Manchester and everybody assumed you supported United. And it was all good, you know. But at least now we're we're uh, seem to be on the right direction. But anyway, I'm sure most of the audience doesn't care about that. But um, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, small business owners and financial literacy. Um, I know it's something that's near and dear to your heart, and um, it it really is a, a challenge. I think there was that report several years ago in the Globe and Mail where small business owners, I think 83% of them failed uh, on a basic financial fluency test. Um, and I know it amazes me whenever Juliet and I are sat down with clients and we're trying to have a conversation about financials um, and helping them understand it. And how many of them think, you know, well, I have money in the bank. Why am I not making any money and just don't understand that the difference there? Um, what, in your opinion, do you think that we all of us can do uh, in this industry to help improve the financial fluency or literacy of small business owners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a big, big challenge. And I think this is one of the... The area is that we, as an industry, uh, technology, bookkeeping, accounting, we can make a massive impact here. Um, I, I've personally been passionate about it in, in part because of it was part of the reason why we failed um, as a small business. But also, about five years ago, we said, you know, what, what is our real purpose, uh, in particular for our small business division? And we said, well, our, our goal is to help small businesses be successful. And of course, there's certain core problems that we solve uh, that's kind of in our wheelhouse, but that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to improve the success rate of small businesses in Canada. And so as a starting point, we went to small businesses and said, if you could go back and do it all over again, what would you do differently? Or said another way, if you were to go back and consult a younger you, um, what would you say? And the number one thing they said was, we wish we had spent more time building financial management skills early. There were some other things like building a business plan, connecting to an accountant, and those things are really important too. Uh, but that was the core one. And so that started a body of research we've been doing and partnerships over the last really kind of four years of finding different ways that we can help kind of crack that, if you will. And I won't say we completely cracked it, but, it, but I've certainly come away with three kind of core areas that I believe are important uh, for really making a difference. Uh, the first is educating the small business on financial literacy. And there's a bit of a like right time for right message that's, that's involved there that's pretty hard to nail. And therefore, part of it is a repetition and creating awareness and ensuring that they can at least ask the right questions. The second thing to do is to connect them to the trusted advisors. And the trusted advisors, first and foremost, are usually bookkeepers, accountants, uh, and perhaps uh, a branch manager at a bank or a mentor, um, but usually kind of in that order. Uh, and I say it in that order because it's the people that actually have the most interaction with the small business owner that are able to help guide them. Of course, there's others, but I'm just kind of saying kind of broadly, those are the ones that we, uh, we focus on. So creating those connections, we know makes a meaningful difference in the success rate. In fact, over 80% of small businesses will say they're more likely to be successful because they connected to an account. And then the third is technology that enables that accountant, small business or bookkeeper um, relationship to play to its highest power and is pushing insights through to help guide the, the small business um, and the accounting professional for that matter, being able to put their time towards the right thing. And so we believe that we have an opportunity to play in all three of those things. We're working 
uh, um, with several other organizations on how do we build a, a, a national momentum around financial literacy. We call it project, uh, our startup foundations, project 10K kind of internally. Getting to 10,000 small businesses, coaching them on financial management skills. The second is that connection, the, uh, the relaunch of matchmaking in Canada, really trying to connect small businesses to bookkeepers and accountants. And then the third is, of course, continuing to make QuickBooks better and evangelizing cloud with the accounting industry um, so that we can automate more of the mundane tasks, free up more time for the bookkeeper or the accountant to really spend time, not in the business, but on the business and consulting the small businesses. So three things, you know, educate, right time, right message, uh, connect to that trusted advisor that really can do that and really personalize the, the, the advice they're giving and then enable technology that allows the, the professional to play to the highest power and pushes insights at the small business so we can help prompt them to be asking the right questions or taking the right actions. That's great. Thank you, Jeff. So you've, you've touched on, you know, the Intuit's purpose. What is Intuit's vision for QuickBooks Online? Obviously, most of our audience is going to either be in the QuickBooks desktop space, QuickBooks Online space, and a lot of your focus obviously is on QuickBooks Online. So what is your vision for QuickBooks Online in how it is able to help small business owners? Sure. Um, well, at a, at a company level, our goal is to power prosperity around the world. And at the small business layer, we, you know, we serve three core segments, consumers, self-employed, and small businesses. And we work with several other groups, accountants being our accounting professionals, kind of being the, the biggest group, uh, working with them to help service those, those three kind of end, end user markets, if you will. There's three customer benefits that we really focus on. One is how do we help save time for our partners uh, as well as those end users? How do we help uh, save money or make more money? And then three, how do we uh, provide confidence? Um, and, and I really like that last one. The, the first two are kind of easy to think of how we might do that. But the last one's really important because we know that one of the, one of the largest health issues, uh, one of the common issues of health issues around the world is stress. And one of the largest stressors is financial stress. And so the more that we can use technology and work with trusted partners to help uh, ease that burden of financial stress, the more we can give confidence to small businesses, self-employed and consumers to make choices and, and lead a great life. And so those, that's our, our goal, power prosperity around the world, um, focus on those three core customer benefit areas, money, time, confidence, and then, so QuickBooks kind of fall, falls under that as one product servicing that small business segment or small business and self-employed. And really there, our, our goal is, you know, QuickBooks Online is a platform, right? It's not really an app, it's a, a platform that several apps work on top of. And our goal is to create a system that is able to help solve as many problems as possible for that small business solving for those three core areas, money, time, and confidence. And the better we can do that, and the more users on the system, the more we're able to pull insights out. Other small businesses like you are doing the following. Um, the more we can really help play to that highest power of, of uh, really you know, driving meaningful insights that you could never do without our technology or our partner's technology or the relationship, uh, say, you have with your bookkeeper that's using our technology. That's, that's really kind of from, from vision all the way down to like product strategy where we're focused. Okay, so a lot of that you've talked about is for the small business owner. Um, how do you see, I know you've launched a new product um, over the last several months for QuickBooks Self-Employed. So do you see your vision for Intuit as being different for the self-employed? market as opposed to the small business owner? Yeah, so there's, there's two other kind of uh, discrete areas of effort. One's on accountants, and I'll, I'll come back to that because I'm really excited about kind of where we're going for the industry. Um, but for self-employed, in part, where we focus with self-employed, we know this is a, a you know, significantly growing sector of, of the workforce, 
Uh, we believe it will, will become even more so, um, north of kind of 40% growth of people that will at least have self-employed income. One of the common, pro common problems that I'm, I'm sure you see self-employed have is they tend to lead this commingled life of personal and, and business. And it all kind of runs out of the same account. And um, they tend to have real stress. They're actually one of the biggest stressors. Actually, TD just released a report on this. One of the biggest stressors around uh, fluctuating income. And so they got these kind of core problems. How do I pull all my expenses out and separate my life? How do I get a better handle of what income I'm going to have in? And how do I manage my kind of my business on my personal debt or uh, obligations? So self-employed started as a how do we help parse the, the that that life out from an expenses side? So it's like Tinder for expenses, right? Left for personal, right for business. We can automate tasks. Then we make it simpler to kind of parse those apart. It's got a wonderful mileage tracker in it. You know, no, no need to have a logbook. We make it super simple for that. Then we released invoicing, so money in, and uh, now we're solving for HST compliance. So you, as you can see, we're really early days, but we're continuing to build on this platform. Um, we believe this is an area that we can expand to many countries, and we've already announced the next two countries we're going to expand to with it. And so it's a, a big, big problem we can solve for. Uh, it's global, and we believe that there's many problems we can solve, and we're really just getting started. In part, what I'm really excited about for the accounting industry is in many ways, Self-employed think like a consumer, want to spend money like a consumer, as in like cheap like a consumer, um, but they have the complexity of, of more like a small business. And so the more we can help uh, bookkeepers and accountants be able to provide a, a advice to self-employed by stripping out kind of the mundane work and making it easier to like, you know, not show up with a box of receipts and say, hey, I want to pay $100, can you go solve my taxes for me? The more we can help use technology to like automate that stuff, the more we can make it more affordable, um, uh, both for the accounting industry as well as for the self-employed to work together. So I'm pr pretty excited about that. We've got a lot we can do around integrating the data directly from self-employed into an application like Profile or a, say a QuickBooks Tax Online offering at some point that will really help streamline that and, and again, help the, help the accounting professional kind of play to the highest power if you will. Awesome. So according to the chat, nobody can see me. So no one believes that I'm here. So I actually wanted to jump in. I guess my camera on my laptop on the side isn't working. So I, um, it's a good thing that Steve and I are married because it's a little <laughs> close quarters here now. Um, okay. So in your previous, um, when you were talking about the purpose, you were talking about how QuickBooks Online can help bookkeeping professionals by automation. Can you expand a little bit on that since most of our audience um, are bookkeepers and accountants? Yeah, so um, you know, firms like yours have already embraced cloud and, and clearly just even in your kind of opening monologue there, you, you know, it's, it's phenomenal because I still remember the first time you came in. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I was hoping we were going to get through this <laughs> whole thing. I'm you know, desktop has all these features. I mean, you were just so staunch of like, I'm building a scalable business and it's built around desktop. Uh, so it's amazing. And I still remember the light turned on at QB Connect in yes. the first year that you came down and I could see it. Like it was just like, oh, they got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, I won't rub that in. Um, but you, I mean, you already know it, right? It's, 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 it's what we can do to automate the mundane. Um, you know, getting the bank feeds in. Uh, as much as possible, enabling the auto reconciliation, like rules-based work to be done, um, being able to pull in the receipt information automatically from organizations like HubDocs or Receipt Bank, being able to pay bills with organizations like Pluto, those are all things that really make for a more streamlined business uh, and, and a better relationship between the bookkeeper and the, and the small business. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And of course, it has a lot of knock-on effects, like rethinking what's my value, how do I price, um, and it's wonderful. It's just like so amazing how far the Canadian industry, the bookkeeping industry has moved, literally in four years, but it's really like in the last two years, 
if you think of the Jeffrey Moore curve of kind of like early innovators, early adopters, kind of traditionalists, and there's that kind of chasm in the middle, you know, this probably started in kind of like 2011, 2012, with those really early innovators that got in just for technology's sake. And then the early adopters got involved in 2012, 2013, you were certainly in that. And then now we're at that explosive phase where in general, those kind of early majority are saying, okay, I got it. And usually what causes them to really understand the power of cloud is when they see like, oh, HubDocs, and I don't have to like, you know, pester people about um, their documents. And oh, now I can like truly work mobile. And like, you know, they're, they're just seeing those things that are, it, it's so powerful. And it's not just about feature for feature of desktop versus QBO. It's like actually a completely different way of providing value and running your practice. But you, you know that already because we've been on it and we'll continue to build that out. Us, our partners, uh, relationships with banks, et cetera. Um, where we're going and, and, and where I'm super, super passionate about, and this is not visionary. We may not create any of this so I don't get in trouble with our people <laughs> here. But Remember um, we are recording this, Jeff. <laughs> yes, yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, my, my vision would be if we can connect as much of the compliance work as possible. Right? Automate as much of the compliance work as possible. Um, from books into the working papers, which we released earlier this year, uh, or last year, I guess now, um, through to tax, which is, is desktop profile, but consider an online world, what that would look like, and, and automate as much of that as possible. So clean data in, uh, categorized appropriately in the working papers, into the tax app, then we free up the maximum amount of time for bookkeepers and accountants to play, play that trusted advisor role. If we can do that, then we can enable tax planning. So, hey, profit up, wonderful, but uh, your tax obligation is gonna go up as well, and I can see in your bank account you're not covering that. We need to talk about it now instead of surprising you at the end of the season. But good news, because this is largely automated, um, I can run scenarios. For you like buy the car under the business versus uh, individual or a bonus versus you know other options and and so now we're really enabling the uh, bookkeeper and accountant to play a different role of actually being proactive you know rather than being post-mortem compliance officer this like proactive uh, trusted advisor and we're, we're you know we're just playing an enablement role to that then the next phase would be you now how do we unlock the, the insights of all of those, we call it the power of many for the prosperity of one. How do we take the data of all of those small businesses and say, hey, there's patterns here. Other small businesses like your small business um, took advantage of these things. And we hand that to the accountant who's the closest or the bookkeeper, the closest to actually knowing the, the current situation of that small business or you know, what they're interested in. Are they interested in growth or you know, where are they as a family business, et cetera. They can look at it and they can say, hey, what's useful here, and then choose what scenarios to run. So, you know, I envision the day that we can streamline as much of the mundane as possible and, and connect all these systems so that we really can be pushing insights to the accountant and bookkeeper who have the best knowledge of the local industry and the entrepreneur um, so they can really play that like, super impactful role in small business lives. That's where we're headed and it's moving fast. Certainly the connecting pieces are moving really fast. And I'm, I'm really proud of the role that the Canadian team is in terms of building up this vision and building up the core technologies. And I believe we can build it in a way that we'll be able to hand to other uh, countries around the world. And, and they'll also be able to provide that value back to their, their bookkeepers and their accountants in terms of um, helping them play that bigger role. Well, the industry certainly is changing and it, it's changing very quickly. It's actually very exciting. Um, I can't remember the last time there has been so much change in our industry so quickly in such a short time. And Jeff alluded to our, the story of the first time we met. So um, I'll give you a shortened version of it. He didn't want to bring it up or rub it in, but, I, but it actually is kind of representative of, of what needs to happen. So I, um, our, or my BDM is Brad Hall. And Brad reached out to me and said, you know, I'd like to stop by. And this is, we weren't on QuickBooks Online. We were strictly desktop. And said, I'd, I'd like to stop by your office and bring my manager with me. Would that be okay? 
And I said, sure. And I had no idea who Jeff Cates was at the time. Um, and Jeff and Brad came in, sat down, and I proceeded to, for probably 45 minutes, tell them how I was never going to move to QuickBooks Online, that we're doing hosted QuickBooks Desktop, um, already have all the advantages of the cloud, so there's no way that you would that you know we would ever make that switch. So that was four years ago, and it was after the meeting that I found out that it was actually Jeff Cates, who was the president of Intuit, um, sitting in my office as I told them unequivocally that I was never going to move to QuickBooks Online. And as Steve mentioned um, at the beginning of this, we are now 90% QuickBooks Online, with the goal of that being 100% by the end of December. So um, for those in the audience that are probably staunch desktop supporters like I originally was, um, you really need to revisit it. So just my two cents there. You know, my, my take on that is that um, yeah. it's, uh, it, it, it is different right, right. organizations move at, at, at different paces and different customers have different needs. And our perspective is, although we believe we can solve more problems with online and we can really empower the bookkeeper to play a completely different role by really embracing cloud and, and, and what it does. Uh, everybody's different. Uh, different small business have different needs. There's different times when to embrace change. Uh, and so, you know, I, as much as I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about the future and I believe online is the future at the same time, you know, it's important that we continue to, to support our desktop customers and support our desktop product. And so, uh, you know, I think that's just import, important to be said that, uh, you know, there's a right time for everybody and that's totally, that's totally fine. Uh, do what's right by your clients, do what's right by your employees, do what's right by you as an organization. Great. The, uh, and thank you for that segue, Jeff. That was very, very, going to be very helpful for the next question. <laughs> um, I, I also, I believe I mentioned earlier that we're recording the webinar. Um, I'm going to turn off the recording while you answer this question. So it's just going to be between <laughs> us. Um, and then we can turn the recording back on after the question. Okay. You okay with that? I'm not, I'm not even sure we know how to do that. <laughs> oh, don't give away all our secrets. Anyway, um, without giving away too many details, but please feel free to give away details. Um, where do you think uh, we are going with uh, QBO, say, one or two years down the road? Yeah, I think that that flow, that experience that I was talking about for the accountants, um, that's a key key area. So that that is not six months out. That is, that is two to three years out. Um, there's a lot of work to be done with connecting the pipes and, and automating the mundane. We really have to work with the banks to get better direct bank beats. Um, I'm actively working with the Canadian banks on, on doing that. Um, we need to get really awesome integrations. In many ways we do with a lot of the other app partners that have data in, and we need to improve core elements, quite frankly, of, of QBO and work papers and, and tax. So that is a multi-year journey that we're on. Um, and similarly with QBO, um, you know, without, without going too far and getting myself too much in trouble, uh, we, we are looking at what are, are there portions of an app that a small business might want to use, that they just want to use that. They're not ready for the bigger thing yet, but we need to get them started on technology the right way. And you know, having them start off using just online banking or paper or Excel, still close to 60% of the small businesses are not using financial management software. So there's a big, you know, we call non-consumption problem we need to solve. And we know that we need to get them earlier uh, in their life cycle to get them started right. And so we're really working on how do we, how do we uh, think both about self-employed and the QuickBooks offering and break it down in parts that enable people to use the part that's right for them at the right time in their business journey, and then enable it to scale appropriately as they need, uh, as they need more, more functionality. So part of it will be that at the same time, there's more we can do around uh, building out more functionality in QuickBooks 
so that it can you know, truly scale as the organizations get larger uh, without necessarily having to use a third party app. Uh, we're totally fine with that, but there should be more functionality sim similar to QuickBooks Enterprise that we can build into QBO. So there's opportunity to extend on both. And then on the flip side, sorry, my light just went off there. Um, the, <laughs> the other core area is with machine learning and artificial intelligence, we will really uh, uh, be able to look for patterns and again, be able to say, hey, other businesses like you have supplier relationships like this. You might consider the following. And so the whole system gets more powerful as more users use it and we're able to unlock that data and provide kind of more um, insights to the small businesses. So those are kind of the buckets, like uh, solve at either end of the complexity spectrum, solve around better insights, uh, and then really help create awesome operating systems for the bookkeeper and the accountant to, to really unlock the full, full value of cloud and uh, be able to spend more time consulting. Those are kind of three big areas uh, that I'm, I'm, per I'm personally very passionate about. Okay, great. I'll uh, just turn the recording back on so we're all good now. <laughs> I did, before we jump into the next question, I did see when I was at QB Connect San Jose last year, there was a video that they had demoed um, where QBO was through your car's um, speaker system, which I thought was really cool. And you actually said, you actually spoke to your car and said, hey, QBO, you know, where is my client uh, located? And your car would go into your QBO database, grab your customer information, and then post it into your nav for you to be able to go there. So I don't know if that's out six months or one year or two years, but it was, uh, it was very cool as to how all the artificial intelligence was going to communicate with each other. Yeah, it's, it's moving really fast. Um, I just, yeah, you saw the one, the Hey QB video. Uh, yes. which is cool. It, it is that, um, tell, you know, tell me certain things or can I afford this client, you know, things like that. And, and largely is, is we can give you basic insights, but then how do we power the, the accountant or bookkeeper to like, give you the, the, the core advice? I saw this other wonderful one uh, with a woman in India that had a photography business and uh, her father was uh, sick in the hospital in another city and it was, hey, we need money to be able to afford the surgery. And, you know, she's got the pain of that burden. And so she asked the system, hey, uh, are there jobs that I could, I could go take on? And so QB went out and said, hey, there are photography jobs on task sites that look like this. Um, these look like they fit your skill. Uh, the average price of this is this. You can work within those margins. Um, great, awesome, I can take on this job. Um, and then QB would say, hey, you have a contractor in that area that you could deploy to this project. Uh, awesome, great, you know, I just solved that. And then the doctor's <laughs> like, but you know, for me to really do that well, I'd probably need a drone to be taken aerial. Uh, QB, can you help me with that? QB goes out and says, here's drones that might fit what you're looking for and then auto enables that purchase and shipping that to the contractor. So you can just see not only what we can do, but also what we can do with other partners that will really help save time and provide that insight. And it's gotta be that mindset of like, hey, we don't try to solve everything ourselves. We solve things in partnership with the, the, you know, the best people around the small business and other, uh, other platforms uh, like Amazon, for example, to be able to enable this. So there's so, so much we can do, but the things I've talked about are the core things that we need to like really nail. Uh, and then, you know, as we build it in the right way that enables us to go to those next levels of using uh, conversational UI and, and enabling connections into other apps, et cetera. Okay, that's great. Um, with the, uh, the, the next question, um, what do you think bookkeepers uh, specifically, uh, what can they be doing today to uh, make sure that they remain relevant and successful going forward? I mean, I know this is something that if you attend QB Connect or Thrive or any of the major conferences, it is the, you know, the main topic of many of the sessions. But for those in our audience who have perhaps, you know, not had the ability or 
chance to attend uh, QB Connect. Um, what do you think uh, bookkeepers can be doing today to make sure they are still relevant, you know, down the road? Uh, attend QB Connect. That was a good start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I only start there because it's amazing how many firms I've talked to that are like 15 year old, 20 year old firms that say it wasn't, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. And then I went to QB Connect and I was surrounded by my peers and I heard these talks and then, you know, the, the lights turned on. Um, and again, it's not just about using one technology or the other. It's like really kind of rethinking your role and what your firm, you know, what your firm's true value is. Um, but, you know, in short, I, I think there is a, our, there is a role of really understanding what your value is. You know, the, the role of a bookkeeper of being that trusted advisor is so powerful, man. If I had that back when I was a small business, I mean, I, I, I'm not unhappy where I am, <laughs> but I probably need to still a small business owner because a bookkeeper would have helped give me confidence that I could do it, that we could grow and we could have hired employees quicker than trying to do everything ourselves, which is a real grind uh, when we started. And it just it would have made such a difference in my, you know, in, in that path. Um, so your value is that trusted advisor. And I would say just really embrace that and, and then think through if that's really your value, then where is the stuff that you're, you're wasting time on that's like really low value add and, and embrace technology and your peers and processes in a way that helps like reduce as much of that as possible so you can spend time where you can have the maximum impact. And that, that can be in the lives of your clients, it can be in the lives of your employees, it can be in, in growing, growing your business to have a, a bigger impact um, in your, your city, your province, or, or Canada. I, I tend to find that bookkeepers get the best practices and learnings from learning from other bookkeepers. So get involved in the uh, social networks. There's quite a few of them, QB and Quinty, Intuit Insiders Network, a lot of these Facebook groups. I'm just amazed. Like, now I hear small business or uh, accountants or bookkeepers saying, hey, I actually choose QBO because I see all of the other people using it. And I know I have a support mechanism to tap into that. And so that's actually the re reason why I choose you. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, that's, that's wonderful. Um, and I'm so thankful to, to so many people like Rachel Fish and Jenny Moore and, and, and selves like yourself doing these kind of things to really help lift the, the industry. So get involved, um, learn. Uh, if you're not, if you're not really using QBO, you know, bring more clients on that you feel comfortable with, get, get a better understanding, understand the core apps that other peers like you are using that save them the most amount of time, like HubDocs or Receipt Capture, like Receipt Bank or Paybills like Pluto um, or Payroll. You know, those are, those are all areas that um, you should get comfortable with what apps are out there that can help better solve the job. Um, and then if you're not already looking at things like value pricing, that kind of fundamental shift of how do I equate the role I play with my economic model, then you should be thinking that as well. And of course, there's some great uh, books to read or uh, talks to wa watch from uh, Mark Wickersham and uh, Ron Baker um, that are kind of the gurus in the industry that you can learn from if you're, if you're not learning from your peers. So those, so those are some of the, the quick things. And then if I didn't mention QB Connect, attend QB Connect. <laughs> you mentioned um, some of the apps um, in a couple of the answers to the questions. And there are so many great apps and there's more being added all the time into the ecosystem for people to choose. Can you give any, any recommendations for steps that a bookkeeper could take to make sure that when they select an app that it's going to be around for five years for their clients so that they do get some value in going through that learning curve. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think the, the mindset has to be a little bit of, of curiosity and nimbleness um, because that, you know, in, in cloud or technology in general, you have to be curious and be able to try new things. 
And so I wouldn't set it as, hey, this needs to be around for five years because the technology is moving so fast that that may not be the right mindset to start with. At the same time, I completely understand the spirit of the question and that you don't want to go to a client and say, hey, I recommend this and then, you know, have that be throwaway work or um, not, not be a good experience for you or your client. And so my recommendation would be um, look at what your peers are using. Uh, look at what's getting used on the app store, you know, the Intuit app store. You can see the ratings and, and reviews there. Um, come to the conferences, meet. You know, we always try to bring the, the app, uh, like the core app providers out uh, to our events. So you get a chance to actually meet them and hear about what kind of investment they're making uh, in the country uh, as well as in their technology. Uh, of course, there's several people like Jenny Moore that are doing like an app certified by Jenny Moore. So there's some people like that that are kind of building a, a peer review process. I think that's really good as well. So those are all kind of good, good, good forums. And in general, I, I, I think you got to use what's right for your client. But there's some core apps that like almost everybody now is kind of turning to like document fetching hub docs. Uh, receipt capture. There's multiple with receipt capture, but it's hub docs, receipt bank, uh, pay bills, you know, there's several there as well. I hear Pluto a lot. There's reporting. I hear Fathom a lot. There, there's others there, of course. Um, so there's a variety. Go to your peers and see what they're, they're using. Uh, and then we've got, you know, some great people like Matt Canis, Brian Leone, folks on our staff that are just focused on how do we help those app providers be successful and have a really good understanding of who's running them, uh, what's the teams behind the technology? And so, you know, I look to them to also be guiding the industry on uh, who, who we should be getting behind. Did that answer the question? Yes, absolutely. And how do we know which apps Intuit is behind? Is it the ones that are listed in the app store? Because there are, there are a lot of third-party apps that connect to QBO which aren't in the app store. So do we start with the ones um, on IntuitApps.com? Yeah, I I personally would, yes, because those are the ones that have gone through kind of our vetting process okay. um, and have the best integration experience. And we can say like things like security and privacy um, are vetted appropriately. So I would start there for sure. Perfect. Right. And that brings us to our uh, final question that we have for you. And then we'll uh, get to the uh, questions from our audience. And I know that um, Startup Canada is something you're uh, very passionate about. Um, perhaps you could just take a couple of minutes and just share uh, with the audience what is Startup Canada for those that are not aware of it and uh, what do they do? Sure, yeah. There's, uh, there's two organizations that I'm uh, in a board or um, in a steering capacity role. One is Startup Canada, and the other is the, the federal government's Financial Literacy Task Force. Uh, Startup Canada uh, started, gosh, or at least our, our relationship with Startup Canada started probably five years ago. I was really early into my role, and there was a, um, it was a banking conference or an e economic development conference that we hosted a table, and the team was telling me, hey, we've invited so-and-so and so-and-so. And one of them was Victoria, who's the CEO of, of Startup Canada. And they were very, uh, very much a, hey, uh, she's got this idea. I'm really not sure it's going to go anywhere. Don't spend too much time there. And then I met Victoria. And what went to be like, hey, spend five minutes became a, hey, let's go have coffee right now, which then became a, became a lunch. <laughs> um, and now four years later, we're the biggest supporter of, of uh, the organization. Um, what I love about Startup Canada is that <clears> – <throat> You know, in general, as entrepreneurs, uh, there's dreamers and there's doers. And dreamers stay in the dream state, and doers are the ones that go from dream to do. And many of, many of the folks that be on this call are doers, right? They, they recognize there is an opportunity to create their own business, and they went out and they did it. And what Startup Canada does is it helps create the environment for the doers to go from dream to do by creating local communities to come together to foster entrepreneurial spirit, to creating connections, to helping facilitate best practice sharing, uh, to elevating them up the, 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 the support network that we have in Canada. Right? We've got a lot of different organizations that can help 
startups become growing and thriving small businesses. But I feel like Startup Canada is really at that grassroots level um, that's really getting dreamers to doers. And so I, I love that about them. I love the energy. Many of our, our bookkeepers, in fact, uh, I see out at the events are, are like really tied in and share that same passion for helping um, startups in Canada. And so I think that's wonderful because it's a great way for the community to connect. And then, of course, uh, they also play a role both lobbying government as well as private institutions like us to play a more meaningful role, um, to, to look at how can we help entrepreneurialism in Canada. So they do, for example, the Startup Day on the Hill, which is the single biggest event of bringing in startups with community members, with private organizations, with government, and really trying to unlock these, here's the you know, deep, deeper insights into what's happening in these local populations across the country um, and, and where government and private institutions can help facilitate real growth and experimentation and not just sit in the ethereal state of, you know, what programs could we create? So I, I, I love that about them. And I, and I really, I do love the role that they play in working with organizations like us. And I think Intuit has a big role here as well, uh, given that we, we tend to be leaders, is how can we help get other organizations involved in a meaningful way? It's, you know, it's, it, there's a value in writing a check. There's a value in writing a check. But the real value is when an organization can get, by, get behind giving back, and it may not be startup, it may be something completely different. Um, but when they can give back and make a meaningful difference in the communities they're really serving, that's, that's, that's really powerful. For us, it's financial literacy and helping, helping startups uh, be successful and giving a first leg up, in particular our app developers, Canadian app developers. Um, but there's so many ways for corporations to get involved and have a meaningful role. And Startup Canada gives a platform and puts a responsibility back on to our industry to help embrace that. And so I, I really love that about it. And I, I love that we have a chance to help foster that as well. So that was a long answer, but hopefully that no, helps. That was great. Thank you. So we're going to jump to some of the questions so we make sure that we're able to answer some of them. Um, sure. And Sandra's question ties in directly to what you were just talking about, um, financial literacy and how QuickBooks is joining that movement. So you've answered that, but she asked a question about whether you're aware of a movement to bring financial literacy into the schools. Yes, yeah, there's, um, there's quite a few different movements uh, at, the, at the global, uh, sorry, uh, at the national and provincial level. I think Saskatchewan actually is uh, one of the provinces that's gonna re really leading to inject it into the, um, into the curriculum as well as organizations like Junior Achievement, of course, which have a very you know, large uh, uh, footprint in this space, and then a variety of other organizations that are all trying to do it as well. And um, I, I, I'm really excited about that. And, and sitting on the steering committee, the financial steering committee, um, I think there's a real role for us to help influence that. I think that's really important. It kind of goes back to education matters, but you have to hit it multiple times. And teaching core fundamentals, even personal fundamentals, have knock-on effects for businesses, running a budget, thinking about, you know, different elements of cash flow. Those are things we should be teaching early stage and then again and then again uh, and then again, you know, throughout the education path. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited where it's going. As the steering committee, we're looking at how do we help really get the research behind the, the organizations that are moving fastest so that we can get that empirical data to help kind of build, build it into a national, a national movement. Okay, so we have a question from Bruce, which asks, he asks whether are, are QBO Pro advisors authorized to use screenshots of QBO in training material that they may produce? And if so, does Intuit provide any guidelines for their use? So I don't know if that's a question for you, if it's a question for your team. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's pretty specific for me. I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so can I get back to you on that one, Bruce? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. You if can. you get back to us, then we will, um, we'll respond to Bruce. Um, okay. So Kelly had a question. You should be able to answer this one. Uh, Kelly wants to know whether you're winning or Chris is winning. <laughs> uh, so I assume that is on the weight loss challenge. Uh, <laughs> That competition uh, started and ended a long time ago with one clear winner. 
awesome. so Chris and I actually, yeah, there's a, a um, apparently this is a, an annual thing that I just happen to forget that we end up in this competition annually. But uh, we got back off of the, uh, the Christmas holidays lamenting the caloric intake we had and that we should do something about it. And we both talked about what weight goal we wanted to get to, which then turned into a competition, which we are want to compete. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm happy to say that despite the fact that he threw the gauntlet down, that he you know, it was going to be done in a weekend, uh, <laughs> I, was able to like get, all. I was able to get it done without having to use a sweat bag or a laxative. So, you know, I thought <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, but since that time, it's it's actually turned into something that's even healthier. My my wife's a, a financial advisor, um, uh, a fitness advisor, so uh, she's not happy about this competition. Um, but since then, he and I have been we almost work out every day together. And uh, despite the fact that he probably would prefer that um, uh, it it didn't have as much business in the runs, uh, it's. Uh, it's been a great way for us to uh, really support each other. And, and now we've got a lot of our employees are all getting involved with different challenges and it's really wonderful. It's fantastic. Okay. Um, next question from Chris, what size of client is QBO good for? What, is there a recommendation? Um, he's talking about one of his clients who has 3.5 million in revenue is, is, are there guidelines that you could recommend as to how someone could choose whether QBO would be a good fit for them? Well, um, not really, not really revenue. I don't, I don't think that's kind of a, a, a major determiner of when you use QBO. It's more around um, um, advanced inventory, perhaps payroll needs, things like that, that uh, you then have to use a, uh, other applications to come, kind of complete the solution. So in, I wouldn't really think of a, a natural limiter that way. But there are certainly areas where you, you do need to bring on other applications to kind of fill the fill the void, if you will. Okay. Um, how does Intuit or QuickBooks decide between apps that are similar in terms of partnering and promoting? Uh, for example, Sandra says, I see HubDocs is promoted over Ledger Docs, for example. Yeah, we do have, um, within our partner framework, we have kind of strategic partners that we believe are creating a wonderful solution that we can actually look at how do we integrate it right into QBO. Like for example, T-Sheets, we've done that for kind of basic time tracking. Um, so there's kind of these strategic ones where we believe we can actually create a really, you know, slick harmonized experience. And then we have partners that are like strong go-to-market partners where we recognize that, you know, really voted by you that, uh, and, 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 and trusted by us that we believe we should, we should market them. And then we have kind of the general sort that, you know, meet these requirements. Uh, and there's, of course, there's hundreds of those that uh, we make available because they, they solve all sorts of unique problems. And then that, you know, becomes the community decides what's best for them to use. So those are kind of the three, three layers. The strategic layer is what are those core big problems that actually um, would benefit from that development and ex, uh, experience design work. And then the strategic one is more working with like, who's got the local teams that are actually solving big problems, but also really vested in our bookkeeping and our, our accounting industry. Um, and so it's like great solution that we can trust a team that's focused on the local market. And we see active working with uh, small businesses and our, our trusted advisors. Uh, that's really where we've tended to focus our effort. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of questions coming and we're not going to get to them all. We've got one minute left. So let's end this one off on a question from uh, Jennifer, Jenny Moore. Hi, Jenny. Um, mm -hmm. Which is, what leadership skills can you recommend for practices who are scaling? Uh, practices that are scaling. Well, you know, a, a couple things. When you're starting off, you tend to spend a lot. I mean, you start off with on the business stuff, right? Where are we headed? <clears throat> Do I have a, a scalable idea? And then organizations tend to go in the business and they're just trying to stay alive and they're trying to realize that vision. And often what happens is that they, they start to forget the on the business side, right? The, the, what are you trying to do? What's the next, what's the next thing? What's your values framework? Um, 
how do you scale? And so one thing to be conscious of is how much time are you spending in the business versus on the business? And sometimes what is required is for you to then at some point say, have I brought in the right resources around me to be able to uh, manage that? And, and so we often I'll see like, for example, for small businesses, that's often the time they'll bring in the bookkeeper uh, or have an accountant play a, a larger role. Um, sometimes they'll bring in a general manager or an operations manager, um, roles like that. But that's usually the sign that, okay, they're big enough now that they recognize, okay, I really need to be thinking about scaling and, and online. Uh, and I need to free up some of my mind uh, for doing that. The other is, is really stay focused. You know, what is your core value prop? What are those what are those customer benefits that you are really solving for and get really crystal clear on that? Um, what are your prioritization principles? Where, what are the things that you really value that you will base your time and your resources around? Um, and those two things together, like that kind of that vision, that what are your customer benefits? And then how does that drive your prioritization principles really helps you when you're in that kind of white space time thinking about, what am I really trying to solve for? Communicate with your employees, communicate with your partners, uh, as well as you can communicate with your customers where, where you're focused and why you're focused there. So those are a couple of ideas. Awesome. Great answer. Love that. Thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us um, for Ninja's uh, very first um, knowledge-based webinar. First of many. First, of, first many. of many. Yes. We are looking to have these monthly um, and we were so honored that you were able to start us off on the right foot. Um, thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to join us on this webinar and for all the great questions. I know we didn't get to all of the questions that came up for Jeff, but, um, and we will get back to Bruce on. on maybe, the... maybe we'll have to have Jeff back again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a repeater. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be here for the annual uh, reunion. Round. <laughs> Absolutely. would love to have that. Um, and for anyone who, um, is looking for more information about Ninja. If you can, um, you can visit our website at ninja.net and learn more about and us. And that's Ninja with a K. Ninja with a K, yes, of course. Um, so thank you again very much. And we hope that everyone has a fabulous afternoon and a great rest of the week. Take care and thank you, Jeff. Thank you.